Accelerated learning can be applied to anything. They've broken down the art of attraction to an exact science. Really, anything. Having an animal, it's like crack. Five days, I stutter, I stammer, my hands are sweating. Millions of fish in the sea. I feel like I'm back in ninth grade. And the world's best teachers. Hey. I'm sure you'll be married by Saturday. I'm Tim Ferriss, best-selling author and human guinea pig. I'll show you how to make the impossible possible by bending the rules. I'll find the world's best teachers and push myself to the edge to deconstruct, decode, and demystify some of the world's toughest challenges in record time. If I can do it, so can you. week's experiment, dating. Why dating? Because dating is hard, and it seems to be getting harder. All of my friends, men and women, complain about it. It takes too much time. I think the mating game and the dating game has become infinitely more complex because you have so many more options. And for me personally, I've always had trouble approaching girls. We're talking about issues and emotional insecurities that I've had since I was 12 years old. Getting rejected, it never to me gets easier. It always, always just crushes my ego. This week's mission is to deconstruct the process of dating by making the qualitative quantitative. Over the next five days, I'll take the nebulous goal of finding a date and make it measurable by test driving three very different approaches to meeting my best match. As Peter Drucker said, what gets measured gets managed. Even at the end of the week, if I don't find and I don't expect to find my soulmate, hopefully I'll at least find a better approach for looking for my soulmate. If you want real results, it helps to have real stakes. I've scheduled a cocktail party for the end of the week, and I have to use my three prescribed dating methods to invite at least three women. First stop, my buddy Sammy, hacker extraordinaire. Sammy is a bit like the Michael Jordan of hacking, you could say. He created one of the fastest growing viruses, or worms technically, of all time. Hey, man. The worm spread so quickly that MySpace was shut down, and the feds banned Sammy from using computers for three years. Now he uses his powers to test sophisticated security systems and for online dating. When I approached online dating a few years ago, I was sending so many messages, getting very few responses, so I just took the nerdy approach, like, well, what, what would I do if I were trying to hack the system? And this is just a different type of system. It would be hard to do it more ineffectively than I've been doing. So. <laughs> you know, you're, you're reading plenty of profiles. You're looking for the same things right. over and over again. Yeah. So it's just repetitive task. A lot of that can be automated. For starters, Sammy figured out how to download every profile on a given dating site to his local computer. I first wrote a scraper <laughs> and downloaded every single profile yeah. in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. So now I have a database of all these profiles. He then automatically ran every woman's profile's text through a program that assessed her writing ability. And I found there's actually algorithms out there yeah. that will tell you, that will give you a score, okay. and it grades text. It yeah. actually gives you a grade level, like a high school grade level. So I removed people who didn't hit like seventh grade yeah. level. Sammy also trained his computer to automatically filter out profiles that weren't likely to appeal to him, using a program that works a lot like a spam filter. If you're in your inbox, you know how you can mark a message as spam? Right. That may have gone past your spam filter? That's actually Bayesian filtering. Over time, the program learns what the discarded profiles have in common so that it can automatically exclude such profiles from future searches. So this was great because now I went from call it 20,000 profiles to look at to call it 1,000. If someone non-technical wanted to throw caution to the wind and do something like this, what would be the, the best approach? Elance, Craigslist, potentially find a, find a developer. Sammy says that by finding a professional to help create your custom filters, you'll save hundreds of dollars down the road on dead-end dates. So let's look at some of the basics of like optimizing a profile. Now it's time to set up my own profile. Sammy's got a hack for this, too. He uses online services to help him choose the most effective profile pick. The ones I personally thought were the best were pretty much the worst. <laughs> Let's say you get onto OkCupid, the dating site. They actually have a feature called My Best Face. You can upload photos on there. They ask you to rate 100 to 200 photos. And when you're actually setting this up, they're asking you, you know, are you an artist? Are you a diva? Are you a dork? Are you a geek? Are you an introvert, an extrovert? And then what they'll do is they will send you a report a few days later telling you not only what your best photos are, but also the type of people who liked each photo. Ah. Pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna post a few photos and see how they do. 
<laughs> our woman, man. <laughs> He, that you tell me, <laughs> that, guy, guy, that guy can jump. Sammy's learned that photos with certain characteristics tend to rate highly on this site. Having an animal, it's like crack. Like, okay. people have to click it. Seems pretty cliche to have the shirtless pic. Yeah. But it works great. <laughs> it's better to look away from the camera in your photos than to look head on. And this is calculated over thousands and thousands of photos. Yeah. Right. If you look at the tools that Sammy is using, they are for selling things. And whether you're trying to create a print or online advertisement to sell something, or you're selling yourself, the principles are the same. We'll check back in a few days to see what the wisdom of crowds tells me about my photos. In the meantime, it can't hurt to check out a few different sites and a few different apps. Well, on some sites, they have chat built in. I highly, highly, highly suggest those sites because you can get so much information across within a few minutes. I hop on Tinder, where as soon as you and another person like each other's profile, boom, you're allowed to chat. Within minutes, I'm texting with a cute girl named Justine who I invite to my party at the end of the week. It's time for my first cold approach. I just took a nap. <laughs> Too fast. Too fast. <laughs> Coming out of yesterday, had a few nibbles with the online and technological dating side of things. But today is different. Today is IRL, in real life. And to me, that is terrifying. Where are you at the moment? I'm on your left, right here. Turn to your left. Yes, that's me. In the van. <laughs> Neil Strauss, a good buddy of mine, has gone from zero to hero, and he knows his way around the pickup game. All the tricks, all the gamuts, all the tools. There is a science to this stuff, and Neil has tested everything, not only with himself, of course, but with hundreds, thousands of students. I was like a late bloomer. I never had a girlfriend in high school. I just was bad with women. I was the guy who was always in friend zone. Right. But I met this group of guys who were part of this kind of secret society of pickup artists. And these guys were guys without looks, without money, without fame. And they'd broken down the art of attraction to an exact science. Neil starts me off with some pointers that violate every instinct that I have. Three second rule is once you spot someone you're interested in, you need to approach right away because two things happen if you stir too long. One is you creep her out. Yeah. The second is you'll chicken out yourself. Yeah, you psych yourself out. Yeah. Also very counterintuitive is the fact that it's easier to approach a group of girls than one solo because they're gonna be more defensive, more on their guard if they're by themselves. When you're approaching, here's the key. It has to seem spontaneous. And this is the weirdest thing, but I swear it's important. You almost want to be putting weight on your back foot that's trying to get away. You're rocking back. You're like, let me just ask you a quick thing. It's almost like you're the one trying to get away. Right, right, instead right. Instead of her trying to get away, right? Let's talk about what you're going to say. Yes. So I like just opening up with a neutral, entertaining question of something you're curious about. It's almost like memorizing a script, but with all these various decision trees, depending on how things go. Armed with only a pickup question about a cashmere sweater for a friend's sister, it's time for my first cold approach. Incredible how nervous this makes me. It won't matter. <laughs> Probably be good if you pick someone for yeah, me. Yeah, here we go. Or, or not. Or not. To break the ice, Neil tells me who to go for, but I can't stop panicking and bailing. I just took a nap. <laughs> Too fast. Too fast. Then I start following a woman, like some creep show from Silence of the Lambs, and Neil stops me. <laughs> I know, it's creepy, but you I was on the phone. You can't do that. I bail, and then I can't chase. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Three seconds. This is the only challenge out of all the experiments I've done where I have a ton of emotional baggage. Personal rejection and all of this stuff, it's a very sensitive thing for me. <sighs> Where's the mark? <laughs> Finally, I get my nerve up. I'm sorry. Can I ask you a quick question? I need a quick opinion. Yeah. So if I am getting a gift for a friend's sister, and, they, and she has small and medium, should I err on the side of getting something too small or too big? Small. No, no. I would get the too big. Okay. Unless she's really sensitive about that kind of stuff. I stutter, I stammer, my hands are sweating. Get a small. Yeah. You would. For Girls like I things tighter than too baggy. Awesome. I'd Thank you, guys. Small. All right, thanks. <laughs> You could have pursued. When you, she walked away, she looked back. That last one went really well, and I think I know why. When my reptile mind wants to do it, I need to do it. Yep. And not let my neocortex jump in and give me excuses. That's it. That's the three-second rule. But the cold approach is just step number one. I still need to figure out how to get the date. We're going to, like, just skip ahead through what was normally, like, three weeks of practice <laughs> to, to, needs to the it? phone number. So I'll give you two little tips. One is the waypoint. You get your question, you're about to leave, and you're like, hey, out of curiosity, how do you guys all know each other? It could be anything, just 
Ask the question out of curiosity, right? Then there's the hook point, and you find a good reason to exchange numbers. Oh, <sighs> I feel like I'm back in ninth grade. This time, Neil will be back in the van. I'll have an earpiece, and he'll be my Cyrano de Bergerac. That one. No, I know, I know. <laughs> um, I have to buy a sweater for a friend's sister. Approaching women I don't know is already very hard for me. Asking for their phone numbers? That's impossible. All right, guys, thank you. Good luck. I appreciate it. I really didn't help. If you turn around, there's a woman in a leather jacket who's going to be coming by. No idea. No idea? No idea. Thank you, ladies. Good luck. <laughs> It's a blonde on your left. She's getting grapes. Hold on one second. Uh, my buddy. I'm Tim, the 13-year-old, all over again. <laughs> it's super embarrassing. But Eleanor Roosevelt said, every day do something that scares you. And every day this week, I'm doing something that scares me. I would go with the small. Right? Go with the small. So it's better to err on I that side. I feel better if people err on the small side. I have to take them out to eat, actually. Are you local here? Yeah, I work for restaurants, actually. Which restaurants? Quince and Catonia. Oh, my god. I said, aha. I know quite a lot about San Francisco restaurants. What do you do with Quince and Catonia? I do their marketing PR. Oh, really? In-house, yeah. I felt like I could then stop ruminating in my head about what line would come next and just talk about something that I was really interested in. Your Marco Canora is a good buddy of mine. Oh, no way. How wild. What's How your name? funny, Annie. Hey, Annie. It's him. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, do you have a card or something? Yeah, maybe I I'll, do. Uh, maybe yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, uh, Maybe I'll swing by Catonia. In my mind, Sammy and Neil have very similar approaches. They're both methodical. Neither of them likes to waste time. So this costs like twenty or thirty dollars in Japan. They're so expensive. And they value testing. Good one. Okay. I won't tell him your plan, Huggy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Once I get through my sort of pit of despair issue with the cold approach, you realize the leg up that it has on online dating is you're effectively having your first date. You know exactly what she looks like. You know exactly the type of vibe that you get from her. That's something you just don't get very easily when you're staring at a laptop. You graduated. <laughs> Thanks, man. <sighs> Tomorrow, we'll see how method number three stacks up. So I'm headed to meet a matchmaker. So nice to meet you. The love of my life, I already found her. After getting Annie's number yesterday at the farmer's market, I sent her a text inviting her to my cocktail party that I'm throwing at the end of the week. Good news, she says she can make it. Exciting stuff. And there's another update. I've received a report from OkCupid okay with the results of the profile pic survey. Very interesting. I wouldn't have picked this as the best photo. Not at all. Nor the second one, nor the third one. <laughs> so, thank God for the wisdom of crowds. Clearly, I can't trust my own instincts. But Sammy's already collected tons of data on which elements women respond best to. So I'm gonna try to make a Frankenstein's monster that outperforms everything. I drag my buddy Neil out to the local ASPCA. So let's get the camera. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna have to get a little what sexy are you doing? time. <laughs> no. This isn't for you. This isn't for you. Are you open to that discussion about this before you do it? No, this is a test. Okay. The love of my life, I already found her. <laughs> According to the data that Sammy's collected, shirtless photos of men improve click-throughs. What else? Photos with animals. So I figure, why not combine them? These are either crack for women or poison. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. So I love the idea of this test, and just with every fiber of my being, I hope that it fails. Later, I'll submit these photos to be rated on OkCupid okay alongside the most successful ones from my last round. <laughs> and we'll see if I found the ultimate recipe for profile pics. This is the funny <laughs> I've ever done. But first, it's time to check out dating method number three. So I'm headed to meet a matchmaker. Didn't know they still made those. Oddly enough, part of me pines after the days of arranged marriages. I feel like it would really simplify things to have my parents say, OK, here are the three girls you can choose from. Tell us what you think. But since this isn't the 1700s or Game of Thrones, I'm going to a professional matchmaker in the heart of Silicon Valley, Amy Anderson of Lynx Dating. I really didn't know what to expect with Amy. I've never visited a high-end matchmaker catering to techno nerds and geek millionaires. I want you to be just brutally honest with me, and I have a feeling you're going to be. I'll do know, my best. If there's a celebrity crush. Natalie Borman. Ah. Uh, I had a crush on Rosera Dawson for a while. Beautiful. Definitely exotic. Strange as it seems, you can actually compare a matchmaker like Amy to an online dating site. They both use algorithms, which are like recipes for getting a certain result. She has filtered out the most valuable, high-impact questions that 
should provide her with a good compass for finding proper matches. I think definitely your match is um, possessing this raw IQ, but meets EQ, right? And somebody who's creative. I like creative. Finding somebody, I like yeah. creative. I do like brainy and smart, but mm -hmm. I like sort of a goofy, playful sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Of course, I also have some physical preferences. The ribcage is important because I like to dance, so from the tango, I ended up thinking about the root cage because it's a perfect fit from here to here. So I'll have my measuring stick out uh, looking at their rib cage. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Just an average day here. The other piece of the equation that Amy can get a read on is how I or any of her clients interact with other people. And uh, you can pick that up very quickly with an in-person meeting. I personally sit down with everybody. So that is something so unique, especially that the online world can't really achieve. The downside, if I had to point to one, would be that she has a limited sample size. I've decided to invite the woman that Amy picked for me to the party I'm hosting tomorrow night. Are we both getting photographs? Oh, no. No, no photos here. Yes. Ah. I mean, people are so quick to say, hot not, hot not, and just completely discount somebody who could be a fantastic match. But the photo thing, I know that that's sometimes a little challenging for some yeah, of the men that I work with. Yeah. Truth be told, I'm not a big fan of this policy. It's essentially the exact opposite of Neil's approach. Thank you very much. In Neil's case, you're getting a visual read first and making the approach within three seconds. In the matchmaking case, we're starting with intellectual compatibility and meeting up without any visual reference whatsoever. All three methods have their pros and cons. Hopefully, tomorrow's party will help me figure out which one works best for me. The OkCupid okay test results for my shirtless cat photos have finally arrived. Oh my god, there he is. I Skype in Neil and Sammy. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me on this momentous occasion. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified too, and I already know the results. So this is this is the best face. Yeah, this is number one, but not by much. So that is a 76 out of 100. So check out second place, which is a, which is a 74. <laughs> Wow. First of all, let's not forget the top photo is you, is you with your shirt on writing. True. So true. say that writers may be hotter than cat lovers. <laughs> <laughs> totally unbiased observation, yes. <laughs> Dating and attraction are counterintuitive. It's one of the few responses we have is just completely not logical. Well, now it's time to see how all these shenanigans add up. For the grand finale of my social experiment, I've invited three potential matches to a party I'm hosting at one of my favorite Thank cocktail you. bars in SF, Bourbon and Branch. Will they actually show up? I have no idea. How are you? I also invited a bunch of my single guy friends and told them to bring anyone they like. Don't worry, we, we don't get naked for at least another 30 minutes, so you have plenty okay. of time to think. I'm just kidding. I'm plenty of time to be comfortable on Carol and nice Hey, to meet nice you. to meet you. <laughs> to some people, it might seem like a suicide mission to invite all of my dates to the same place at the same time. I'll try the bitter end, why not? That might be metaphorical, <laughs> depending on how the evening goes. But Neil suggested it, and I agree with him. He went on dates with all those people that'd be two weeks, and now he gets to kind of interact with everyone and see who he connects with. So I think it's a smart, efficient way to date. And there's a bunch of other guys there too, so if someone doesn't connect with Tim, there's a bunch of other very cool gentlemen in the room. Plus, I get to see how my prospective dates interact with my friends. And it gives the women a chance to get to know me through my friends. What's the best way as host to kind of manage this? Yeah, guys will make the mistake of like, okay, there's three or four women that are all into me, and she gives me attention, now I'm here. She gives me attention, now I'm here, and you'll burn you'll burn it all out. Yeah. So a beautiful mind is, problem. You'd have to kind of commit in some way and know that this is the person I'm interested in. Yeah, every guy here is a good friend of mine. Uh, hey! Thank you for coming. I'm a couple of bitter ends in by the time Justine, who I met on Tinder, arrives. Next in, Amy the matchmaker with a beautiful woman in tow. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm going to be honest. I did a Google image search of you. And I kind of thought that you wouldn't be wearing a shirt. And just as I'm getting into my conversation with Emily, Guess who shows up? Hey, how are Annie you? from the farmer's market. I was really doubtful she would show. Have you been here before? I have. Yeah, of course you have. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily. Annie. Nice to meet you. She's involved with restaurants. Oh, yeah. I work for two restaurants in the city. For 
Quince and Catonia. Well, isn't Quince's 10th anniversary coming up? Yes, it is. Look at you guys. You've done your research. How did you know this? I'm a foodie. Despite coming into the cocktail party with some nerves, everything is going great, just as Neil said it would. They seem to be getting along with each other. They seem to be enjoying getting to know my guy friends, which is awesome. That is the ultimate test. Hey, what is this? this is a good yes. Lucas fit. Boom. Just like that. Am I going to start dating any of these women? It's too early to tell. What I can say is that this has been a surprisingly successful experiment. First and foremost, you can harness data. You can do this in a smarter way. So you have to test. That's part of the fun of all of this. So do it to dating, do it to language, do it to sports, and you can run the numbers. As for which of the three dating methods work best, it turns out I can't pick just one. You have online, very high volume, potentially low yield. Then you have Neil, which is medium volume, medium yield. And then the matchmaker, which you would hope is very low volume, high yield. And it's not so much a question of which is better. It's a question of which is better for you. It just depends on where you are in your life, how much time you have, how much money you have. You choose the right tool for the job. Hey guys, Tim Ferriss here. One of the things that kills me about TV is that you have to take all of this amazing footage in our case, we had five to six days of 12 to 16 hours typically per day, and you have to chop it down to 21 or 22 minutes, which is a 30 minute show with the ads removed. It just makes me want to stab myself in the eyeballs with bicycle spokes. It's so agonizing. The good news is we have all that footage. And so we've taken huge extended scenes, we've taken interviews, we've taken tutorials, everything imaginable that we could get our hands on that we thought was really world-class that we wanted to put in. And you can find it at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV, all spelled out, F-O-U-R, et cetera. And we really feel like we could have made the best two-hour documentary imaginable on the subject that you just saw, or had five different shows of equal quality, all different with the footage that we captured. So please check it out. There's some amazing stuff. And you can also check out the podcast where I do very long, in some cases, two to three hour interviews with a lot of the experts in this show. And that's the Tim Ferriss Show, which was nominated one of the best of iTunes, which I'm very, very happy about. And uh, you can check out both. So find everything at fourhourworkweek.com forward slash TV. And if you think that's an oxymoron, by the way, you're right. If you want a four hour work week, do not work in television. Thank you for watching.